Welcome to the Smith Publicity All Things Book Marketing Podcast, offering tips, insights, and advice from the best in the publishing industry. Hello, and welcome to this episode of All Things Book Marketing. I'm your host, Olivia McCoy, and our special guest today is Don Montefusco. Don is a best selling author, transformational coach, inspirational speaker, and the visionary CEO beside, uh, behind Inside Light Creative LLC, a globally acclaimed coaching company helping people and businesses transform their lives by understanding their authentic story. Hi, Don. Hi. It's Hi, so nice to have you on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start by having you tell us more about what you do and how you help authors. Sure. So I'm a transformational writing coach, and I'm also a transformational personal development coach. And you know, it was an accident. <laughs> I went to Erickson College, which is an excellent school for um, certification, some ICF master level certification for coaching, which is awesome. And one of the things that that particular college uh, teaches is how to get people out of resistance um, and how to enter into the unknown where all creativity lies, you know, and, you know, you'll hear people say all kinds of things like that's where your most success lies is in the unknown. But when writers sit down to write, it is a phenomenon that is unreal. Like I can get people to paint, I can get people to play music, I can get people to do all kinds of things, you know, if they're working with me just for creativity. But when I focused on writing, which became my passion, and I have an MFA in writing, so I'm very passionate about writing. Yes. Um, I realized on my own, you know, how difficult it is to just write. And once I basically studied myself uh, and then ad nauseum, you know, studied so many books and people and got so curious how the brain works and how the human condition is. And now with social media, you know, all that and comparison and all that stuff, I really help people and I really am passionate about it to understand that resistance is a part of the writing. It is part of the writing, that there is no way out of that, that when we sit down to write, it's it's considered the, the, the art that is the most difficult to kind of get through, you know, um, some people are great starters and then they never finish it. Some people get really close to the end and then they freeze. Some people never get started, you know. Um, and then some people do, you know, there are those out there that, and it's not a majority um, who magically, <laughs> you know, manage to, to get right through the process. So I work with people who know in their heart of hearts, like deeply that they want to write a book and they're frustrated, mm -hmm. they're haunted. They aren't just saying it because everybody says it because everybody does said it, you know, well, you should write a book. I should write a book. But um, and they don't know they've tried, you know, and they finally come to me uh, via usually word of mouth. And then they're like, how did you get me to do this? And so I did actually write my last book because of the request of what the process is. And then I was lucky enough to have it become a bestseller. So that that was uh -huh. uh, really cool. Yeah. Well, as hard as it is as it is to write a book and publish a book, I also heard that it's the best time to be an author. What are your thoughts on that? It is. I scream this from the rooftops. And I mean, like people, <laughs> they're like, don't get her started. She's going to start. Because <laughs> it's like every conversation will lead me to that. Like if I'm in a business networking group, anything. Oh, you write? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, you know, and then they'll immediately go into their story, which is an outdated, very, you know, we get so stuck in the past and mm -hmm. things have changed at such a rapid pace mm -hmm. that, you know, people of a certain age. So I work with a lot of people in their 50s, 60s and 70s and um, 82, even this one model that um, she used to work with Sophia Loren. She wanted to write her memoir, but uh, they they this is an antiquated way of thinking which is you know and, and I worked at Putnam Publishing so I worked for um, at Penguin Putnam in Midtown Manhattan back in the 90s uh, when it was the more traditional way of getting published and I realized it really had only to do with who you knew because the senior editors or the president would say go in the galley room 
and pick out number, you know, 1026 and bring it and put it on my desk. And I'm like, well, what happened to the other ones? They're like, oh, we're going to trash most of them. We can't, we're not even gonna look at some of them because we don't have time. And, oh, I was, I mean, talk about heartbreak. I was like, is this how this works? You know, needless to say, I graduated college and I left in New York city. I, when I graduated NYU, I didn't want to live in the, the city anymore, but so here we are fast forward. Mm -hmm. um, I did, when I went to grad school and was talking to my professors, they were like, well, you're never going to make any money, uh, you know, being a poet, for instance, which is my first love. Um, you're never going to make any money, you know, with anything except for, you know, long form novel or, or nonfiction. And I was like, I don't really like long form novel, but I do love story. And I, and I understand it. I like nonfiction. And I said, long nonfiction I kind of skip around I skip over the case studies you know I'll skip and then I found out lots of people were doing this so two things one you don't need to write a book that's over 150 pages don't even bother to some degree unless you really 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 are telling something phenomenal and it's flowing and you, you know, you're doing a great job but if you're thinking oh my god I'll never be able to start a book because it's going to take me years to finish it you know that's one lie Two, then how am I going to get it published? If I just get it self-published, it doesn't count. Well, guess what? Many, many authors, I mean, like hundred, I'd say over a hundred thousand authors have, have transitioned from being published by a publishing company, which we call the big five now, mm -hmm. um, to publishing on their own because they were only getting 25 cents for a book versus 75% of whatever they you know, put out there for the book and self-publishing. So they lost so much money. They're broke. You know, the, the publishing company owns everything. They have no control over their work. So let me get this right. I don't have to write a really long book to be really well known and to, you know, uh, fulfill my dream, to make a difference, to tell my story, to entertain people, which we need right now more than ever. That's a good thing. Uh, I can publish it on my own. I recommend having, you know, a, a publishing coach or someone who really understands the self-publishing process. You can do it on your own. Don't get me wrong. I've done it on my own. It's way easier to hire someone that understands, you know, the 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 SEO and the metadata behind it and things like that. But you don't have to. You can do it on your own. Uh, you don't even need a soft cover. You can do a Kindle. It is amazing. So. Sometimes when I work with a client, I'll have them write a really, really, really short book, like 20 pages, mm -hmm. 17 ways to raise a child uh, that has ADHD without using meds. That actually was something like that. I mean, I'm not giving it away. She's still working on it. Uh, 20 pages, 17 tips. And I was like, just get it out there. See how it feels. See, see what that feels like. And then, and that like blew her up. She's like, oh my God, you mean I have an author central page? You mean I'm on Amazon? You mean I can send this to my friends and like help them? So when, when I say there has never been, or we say there has never been a best time in all of human history to be a writer and an author, we're not joking. When I was a kid, I'm 53. When I was a kid, I did write little books, little poetry books, stapled them together, made photocopies of them. And I was lucky if my cousins read it, it was lucky if my parents read it. I was lucky if anybody read it, you know, but I was proud. I had my little chat book, you know, now some, like for instance, uh, Sam Bennett, very, very two, two time New York times, bestselling author, get it done. She helps people out of creative resistance as well. Her first book was an 18 page poetry book on Kindle called something like poems to God that I bought and loved you know, and she's just amazed that she still has that up there. So even the New York Times bestseller who got picked up by publishers put out, you know, books that she wanted to put out and they were read mm -hmm. by thousands of people, which you could never do before. So that's, I mean, I think I have an argument, you know, I think I've, 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 you know, closed my case on that. Um, with the evidence of how amazing it is. And if you ever get told, and this is really just, I always have to breathe, you know, use my tools. Uh, I'm from New York. 
in the from the Bronx. So, you know, I got a potty mouth once in a while. Uh, but when someone says something like, oh, self-publishing doesn't count, right? I just have to like hold it in, you know, because that's their unfortunate, very unfortunate story that they've told themselves. Why? Because they're afraid of being seen, because they're afraid of actually it's the opposite. And, and you know, having the background of the transformational coaching as well as the writing background, um, I can see where that resistance lies now. And if someone wants me to help them, I will. But I've learned the hard way not to give unsolicited advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. I'm hearing you say that not only is it a great time to be an author because of so many technological advancements in the editions of books, the way to go about publishing, for example, uh, we're seeing a huge rise in audiobook popularity. Oh, That's yeah, been that. yeah. blowing up. Ebook blowing. is still very popular since its inception in like 2008. Yeah. Right. Uh, so <laughs> it's been going on for a while now. And then print books, of course, have never going anywhere. Print book sales are still Ever. very, very good. Ever. But also in what we're publishing. I mean, you mentioned chapbooks for poetry. Um under 150 pages of a book, otherwise known as like a novella. We're also yeah. seeing a huge popularity in zines. Uh, mm -hmm. Danny Kane is a bookstore owner, the Raven bookstore in oh nice Kansas, I believe. I love those, yeah. And yeah, they publish tons of zines. They go through yes. microcosm. They publish them themselves. It We're seeing that. Yeah, zines. it's amazing. Exactly, and, and you, you can go sell. And just... Yeah. And you can sell your zine on Amazon and through Ingram Spark and all these other yep. places that you normally would a full length book. So you have all of these options now, which also make it more accept, uh, accessible in general yes. for anyone yes. looking to be creative and share their yes. story. And here's the guarantee. Here's the guarantee. If you put your book out there and you're willing to jump on social media, some people are like, I don't like social media. I'm sorry. This is the way it is. But you know, if you're willing, and most people are, there's, there's a very few, but there's like this new wave of I'm, I'm getting off social media only for them to get back on. <laughs> they just say it, you know, mm -hmm. but if you're willing to, to just say, Hey, I did this, mm -hmm. you are guaranteed readers. Mm -hmm. People are curious. And when people say things like, Oh, uh, well, are, there's too many books out there. Aren't books, you know, getting out of style or people aren't reading books. And I'm like, well, there's 600,000 books published every year still, mm -hmm. soft cover. Mm -hmm. There's 8 billion people in the world. Most of the soft cover are available on Kindle. 90% of people who are looking at your stuff are going to look at them on their smartphone first, because even in third world countries, they give out uh, smartphones. I've actually had consultations with people in caves. I'm not joking. Who who live in caves? In in uh, it was in South Africa. This woman and she came out to get a signal because she was watching some of my interviews. And then she called me for a free consultation. Um, and I was just so enamored with her, you know. And I've had mostly women. I've had reach out to me um, who have barely anything. You know, I mean, we're talking barely anything, but they'll read it on their smartphones. So who do you, you don't even know who you're affecting and, and entertaining, changing their lives, you know, making them think a little bit differently. Um, so I feel like, you know, here's what I also say, hey, to my class, if they, you know, a workshop, I go, how many books do you think came out about weight loss this year? And then, you know, all these different numbers, it's approximately 200,000, something like that every year, approximately. I think it might be 150,000. I'm not sure. It keeps changing. So I go, mm, wow. So um, how do we lose weight? <laughs> and they go, well, I go, putting all the excuses aside, putting all the menopause hormones, this, that, the other thing, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Putting all that aside, what's the basic principle of losing weight? less energy in more energy out and you lose a pound right uh so i'm like but we still are writing books about how to lose weight you know and, and then i'll say you know so if your cousin was an awesome mechanic for volvos mm -hmm. but your town already has a volvo dealer and maybe one or two other mechanics do you think that you should just tell your cousin no 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 do not be a mechanic 
you'll never make it, mm-hmm. you know, or a hairdresser or stylist rather, you know, I was like, there are about thousands of hairstylists. Do you, are you going to tell someone, no, don't be a hairstylist because there's already hairstylists. I was like, so there's this other really weird story that we tell ourselves. And again, this is resistance. This is, I don't want to be seen. I'm afraid to write it. I don't know what'll happen. Um, well, I guess there's too many books or this book has already been written or they stole my story. Well, not in the way you're going to tell it, you know? Uh, sure. So, so it's just that I think it all boils down to truly, I th- really, honestly, I think it all boils down to the fact that we know we'll be seen now. We know we will be seen if we want to be seen. And that's what we need to, or might want to consider grappling with, you know? Um, yeah. and I, I often say, write it. Don't show it to anybody. Let's see what happens. Just write a really good book and don't show it to anybody. And then of course, while we're working and there, you know, and I'm, I really have a knack for helping people with their stories, whether it's nonfiction, fiction, even poetry. And uh, <laughs> by the time they get three quarters through, they're so excited to show it to somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and people who read fiction, romance, or fantasy aren't going to stop after one fantasy book, one romance book. And same thing for nonfiction. If you're looking for advice on something, you're probably not going to take one person's word as exactly the ultimate word. You're going to read a lot of different perspectives yeah. and articles and books and anything you can find on the subject. Uh, exactly. Dog training is my big example because I oh, didn't nice. read That's just one dog training book. I read a bunch to figure out what I was going to do for my dog specifically. That's a Uh, great example. Yeah. It's, it's not just, it's not just joining the, the conversation. It's, it's Mm -hmm. adding your voice to it and being a part of it Uh, Mm -hmm. as well. I'm also hearing that the goal isn't necessarily to be a bestseller, to be the best book. It's to make a difference in at least one reader's life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I always call it the lover. I say, mm-hmm. you know, some people say avatar, ideal reader, you know, I, I just think that well, first, I think the word avatar is way too vague for people who don't know what that means. And then um, ideal reader can feel like, oh, what if I pick the wrong ideal reader? You know, like then there's that anxiety, like, well, if I'm, if I'm trying to figure out, you know, who's my ideal reader, because, you, you know, you, you probably know this, many people out there probably know this, instead of writing to a whole audience or even a demographic, you try to think of that one perfect reader. And I call that reader the lover, the lover of your book, the lover of your book who is sitting there, doesn't even know that she or he's through they are waiting. They're waiting and they don't know that they're waiting. They don't know that you're going to change. They, but there's this thing that's happening. You Are you going to disappoint the lover? Mm-hmm. Right? Because there's one lover for sure of your mm-hmm. work. And, um, and, and so that's, something phenomenal I think that we get to to understand that now is there a critic is there a hater oh honey haters gotta hate you know <laughs> like that's yeah. their job I had a comedian this is comedian Cat Williams he once said it was really he was all he was really promoting living your purest mm-hmm. life and then he was talking about haters and he goes girl if you got 14 haters this week you better have 16 next week because you're not doing your job you know so he kind of flipped it but because he was saying well you've got hundreds and hundreds of people who love your work okay so you have 10 people who don't like maybe don't like you you know it's rare that people leave really bad reviews except for I don't know if you know this but on Goodreads Mm -hmm. eh, not a big fan of that that's people who are just bored sitting at home and kind (laughs) of want an argument so everybody out there you know just be careful with that one but um in Amazon and I'd say Ingrid Spark and in general um people are mostly kind you know, if they don't really love your book, they'll say why. They'll say mm-hmm. like, well, I didn't realize it was mostly about so-and-so, or I mm-hmm. wish it had a little bit of this. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the kit. Here's the great part. If you're, if you want to write a part two, or if you want to write another book that approaches the same subject and maybe a different angle, your, your quote unquote, bad quote unquote reviews are showing you pain points that they or challenge points that your readers really wanted more of what if it's fiction you know oh that character I was really into that character you know and you can use that Mm -hmm. for your next book they give you the information on what 
you know, how you can, the next book could be even better. So, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting and I, it breaks my heart, you know, to help people. I mean, I do, but I always get so sad when they see like one possibly medium review and they only focus on that. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been guilty of things like that all the time. That's what we do. Uh, but it's important to remember that there's going to be way more lovers, yes. you know, than there are quote haters. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So in becoming an author in 2024, upcoming 2024, because now is the best time, what is some advice that you have? Uh, start now. Start now. Start now. Like literally just start now. Like stop thinking about tomorrow or later or an hour from now. Like if you could just pick up your phone, get us, I use simple note because it's mm -hmm. simple. Um, sure. <laughs> and it, it it's on all platforms so if I need to look up something while I'm on my laptop that I wrote on my phone songs poems ideas for books whatever uh you can't go wrong when you start right away because it's going to be a mess it, it's going to change it's not in stone these are you're gonna you're gonna be opening the portal to something and that something is going to change that's the job of the writer the job of the writer is to write and you won't find the gold pieces unless you dig. That's just how it is. And I remember in grad school uh, and undergrad school. So I went to NYU and then I went to Eastern Washington University in Spokane. I remember, you know, we would hand in our work in the, small classes, actually. And like grad school was like eight people. It was a very small program. Um, but even in NYU, you know, maybe 15, 16 people. And the 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 professor would inevitably, as they're going to review your work, just cross out like the first paragraph. And they're like, the, the story starts in the second paragraph because you're warming up. Or mm -hmm. one time, I mean, she knew we, we had a good rapport. She just went, all right, everyone, take Don's story, take that first page, just rip it off. And let's start reading from there. And it was like, whoa, that's where the story begins, because we think we're beginning where we begin. Mm -hmm. It turns out we're not. It turns out that's the warm up. And the subconscious mind, once it understands the, the the real formula of story. So in screenplays, they say, tell me the same thing, but different. That's what directors mm -hmm. and producers say. That That's true for everything. Tell me the same thing, but different. And so the same thing is the hero's journey. Tell me about this, the, the main protagonist, whether it's nonfiction, fiction, even poems, we'll keep poetry over here you know, uh, and we'll say, so we have a protagonist. And even if that's you in your memoir, we still call it the protagonist. And uh, the protagonist starts out a certain way. Usually there's some tension, there's a challenge, there's an action, you got to get them in there right away. You've got, you know, a setting, you've got, you know, using your senses, the reader's like, oh my God, I'm right in there. Blah, 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 blah. And then the protagonist, again, nonfiction or fiction is going to go through some kind of a transformation hit a few low points then the reader's gonna go oh no oh no oh no and then the you know usually the the story ends whether it's a case study story by a psychologist or it's a fiction you know fantasy whatever and then at the end there's a there's a difference in that uh protagonist so um when you're writing you you understand that basic premise then you just start Mm -hmm. Now you start from the low hanging fruit, right? So when I say begin right now, it's just brain dump a bunch of ideas, then organize those ideas in three parts. And you don't have to keep those parts in the book. It's just for your brain. Then look at the parts, then say, okay, how long do I want the book to be? 150 pages, hundred pages. Okay. So now divide that up in three parts, even though the the peak is going to be towards the end of the book. And then um, what do they call that? It's not the peak. It's a word for it. Um, but basically, you, you you so now you have a basic structure. And then they say, just pull from the low hanging fruit. Well, I don't want to write the beginning of the book. I kind of want to write this section. Great. Write that section. What's happening is the subconscious mind. And there's proof of this in athletes, musicians, or it's continuing to formulate your story and, and, and whatever your book is about, it's continually writing for you. So if you're consistent, 
you know, yes, it's going to get edited. And yes, a lot of it is going to be moved around and taken out. It's okay. Yes, you might be repeating yourself and not realizing you're repeating yourself. That's the job of the editor. You know, just write it. That's your job. In Big Magic, Liz Gilbert just says, your job is just to write. It's not to, to organize it. Then you pass it to the editor and you can get it. Non, it doesn't have to be a bank breaking editor, um, but someone who can look at it all from a third party, you know, a global perspective. And, and you may not like that editor and that's okay. You can, you can test out a couple of different ones, but they're the ones that are really going to make sure that things are in order. So what did I just say? Here's what I said. You're not going to write this alone. Mm -hmm. So start now, start doing your part now. And you can then have it organized and ha you have a proofer, have a friend, preferably a friend who knows what they're doing in terms of writing, sure. not just somebody who's going to say, nobody wants to read your book. You know, don't, you don't want that person. Um, because a lot of those people exist. Uh, so I would say start now because by the time we get to 2024, one, your book can be done. Mm -hmm. it, I've interviewed 200 people, 200 best selling authors, and they, every one of them, when, when I had the question and I said, how long should it take to write a book? They laughed and they said, well, I said, actual writing time. And they were like, you know, the book that took me two years really was only about six months. You know, the book that took me, you know, six months was only about a month, you know, of writing if I really looked at it because it was a shorter book. And if you're willing to sit, to organize it, sit down and do the work, you know, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, you would be so surprised at how much can get done. And here's the other thing. If you do sit down for 15 to 20 minutes a day, you're actually going to be sitting down for about an hour. You won't stop because you're so used to it. And, and, and it's just like exercise. If you pick up a 25 pound weight and try to do a curl, at least for me, ain't going to happen. I, you know, I started with five pounds and worked my way up now, I think to 10 pounds and 15 pounds. But if you start right away, you know, trying to just dive in and write for three hours and you're like, okay, I'm going to get so much done for three hours today. You're not, number one, you're going to hate yourself. Then you're going to think you're not a writer. Then you're going to think the writing sucks. You know, so I would say set yourself up for success. Start now. And when you're done with the book, then, or maybe towards when you're done with the book, either get a book, a, a story coach, a book writing coach, you know, to help you with organization or go straight to editor, you know, there's, or go straight to like self-publishing coaches. I have one amazing self-publishing coach that I use and uh, look at their, like she has over 600 bestsellers. I mean, she knows what she's doing, mm -hmm. you know, so you, you really want an, a team to help you. Um, and then I'll, I'll say this, Brene Brown didn't think she was a writer. It was a great story and you probably know it. Uh, and she said to Liz, she met Liz Gilbert. She says, I wish I could write a book. I can't write a book. I can speak on stage all day long, but I can't write a book. So what did Liz Gilbert say? She says, you know what? Pay a bunch of people, like four or five people or your assistants, or whatever. Go to a beach house, get a recorder, have them ask you questions, answer the questions, then transcribe all your answers and then write your book. Mm -hmm. 12 New York Times bestsellers later, mm -hmm. you know, so there's lots of ways to write. So it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be like this. It can be like this. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use the, the, the audio tools on Google Docs, on Microsoft mm -hmm. Word. It'll start writing for you. Uh, there's lots of ways to write quickly and easily and, and or have a friend ask you questions, answer those questions and then put that together. So you can start now and then easily, easily be a bestseller in 2024. At the very least, you know, be an author and have an author central page and have a paperback. And then everyone's going to ask you to do the audio version. So get ready for that. <laughs> and Don, for the authors that do, or the writers that do take your advice and start now, where can they get in touch with you when they're ready to learn more? Oh, so they can go easily enough. You can go to helpmedawn.com and that will jump you to my website, dawnmonofusco.com, which is a mouthful, but that's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
And then you can book a free consultation call. And okay. what I do is I'll go over what your needs are, listen to what your story is, listen to what your blocks might be. Specifically, I'm listening to why you're not writing. You know, specifically, I'm I'm, I'm asking questions to see if I can get to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once I understand what what your goals are, either if I'm not the best fit, and I, I out there, I'm going to say this to anybody who's listening to this as a coach or a writing coach or a marketing coach, whatever, please have a list to refer people to. Because if it's not you, there's no competition in this world. There's 8 billion people. Trust me, there's enough clients for everybody. So if I'm not the best fit, like I don't do sci-fi and fantasy, I don't understand it very well. So I would then have a referral for them. You know, I'll introduce them to someone who's who's better equipped for that or maybe they're in a different part or process of the book and I'll say oh no 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 no! I want you to go to my publisher um because you, what you need now is the editor the proofer you know to mm -hmm. design the cover and get moving mm -hmm. on it and you're 95 percent done with it mm -hmm. you don't have to be 100 percent done to hand it over to the editor actually preferably let them have a little wiggle room to help you mm -hmm. Um, but I'm definitely more the person that you're coming to because you are frozen mm -hmm. and you cannot for the life of you get it out of your head. Or if you do, it just comes out in more journal entry ish things. Mm -hmm. And you just really want to figure out how to make it a book. So that's my job is to, is to, it's called a, I call it mind tangles. It's my job to untangle your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to teach you the, the formula and to keep you consistent to the finish line, right? Then you pass it along to, and, and there's, there's multiple self-publishing coaches that you can interview with. And I highly recommend that you interview with a few of them. Don't just pick the first one. Um, and so go to helpmedawn.com and you're on your way and we can chat and then we'll see where it goes. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure all of our listeners and watchers are very grateful. Oh, I could talk about this till the cows come home, as you can tell. <laughs> as you can tell. And <laughs> listeners, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> and listeners, watchers, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with anyone else that might be interested. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Smith Publicity All Things Book Marketing Podcast. To reach us and learn about our many services, visit smithpublicity.com or send us an email to info at smithpublicity.com.